If you watched the last two hours of the Masters, you might still be sitting there just stunned. It's okay because Jordan Spieth will be wondering what happened to his game for who knows how long. No such problems at the 16th hole, though. Three hole-in-ones today in the same round. Those coming from Shane Lowry, Davis Love, and Louis Ustazen. Ustazen had by far the most interesting. His tee shot gets to the left of the green pin before it starts rolling and rolling and rolling. It winds up hitting a ball from a previous shot, and the ricochet puts it into the cup. Just a once-in-a-lifetime shot as you see Ustazen celebrating there. As for the tournament, it was Jordan Spieth to lose. He shook off an early bogey, then caught fire before the turn. He birdied six, seven, eight, and nine, and moved him to seven under overall, an almost insurmountable lead. Then a bogey at 10 was the beginning of a major collapse. Amen corner struck against Spieth and struck hard. Another bogey at 11, and then a jaw-dropping quadruple bogey on the par three number 12 hole. Two shots into the water, another into the bunker. It was just not Spieth's day. He was visibly frustrated after tapping in right here. But meanwhile, Danny Willett quietly pushed ahead. He came into the day at even par for the tournament, then birdies on 13, 14, and 16, pushed him into a three-shot lead. See just a gorgeous approach shot there, landing feet from the hole. Kiefer Willett was playing bogey-free golf down the stretch. A huge chip on 17 here. It didn't have to go in, just had to help him save par, which it did. The lead was too much for Lee Westwood and Dustin Johnson to overcome, who were trailing him. And on 18, Willett tapped in to the applause of many. Five under on the day, five under for the tournament. But Jordan Spieth, he was still on the course, and he would eventually make up ground. Two birdies got him just two shots back, a chance for another at 16, but he wound up settling for par. And then on 17, Spieth ended up in the sand and needed a tough putt to save par. Instead, it's another bogey and just a missed opportunity to repeat as Masters champion. Danny Willett celebrated in the clubhouse and celebrated as Speed handed him that coveted green jacket. Really describe, you know, the emotions and feelings. Um, you know, we all got there, try and play good golf, and um, at the end of the day, someone, you know, someone's got to win a golf tournament, unfortunately enough today, uh, you know, today was my day. Four birdies in a row to end the front nine. I knew that, I knew that even par was good, at least by a shot. And sometimes that makes it hard. Um, you go away from the game plan that I was using on the front nine, and you just play a little conservative. And um, you know, I just put a little bit of weak swings on it, three holes in a row. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm not leading anymore. Willett wins the Masters on only his second try. And get this, he originally was not going to play as his first child was due to be born over the Masters. But mom gave birth 11 days early, allowing Willett to make the trip to the Masters. If Felix Hernandez wakes up one morning and says he's done with the Mariners, might be hard to blame him. Today, the King was brilliant, and the rest of the squad was not. King's court in session today for the series finale against the Oakland A's, and Felix was dealing early. Big jam in the third with the bases loaded. He uses that nasty changeup of his to strike out Stephen Vogt and end the scoring threat. For Oakland, Chris Bassett matched Hernandez when it came to getting out of jams. Kyle Seeger goes down swinging with a runner on second. And the Mariner offense continues to look anemic outside of Texas. Steve Clevenger grounds weakly to first base with the bases loaded to end the fourth. And finally in the sixth, Seattle, they catch a break. Cattell Marte grounds out to second, but Jed Lowry bobbles the ball. Should have ended the inning. Instead, the, he beats the throw, and Nelson Cruz scores from third, and it's 1-0. Felix got better as the game went on in the seventh. He gets Josh Fegley swinging to strike out the side here. But a high pitch count would end the Kings' day. So let's bring in that revamp bullpen. Joel Peralta in for the eighth. And Marcus Simeon sends the 3-2 pitch into Edgar's Cantina. Just an absolute bomb out to left field. And Nori Aoki, he tries to bring it back into the yard, but no luck there, just too deep. Game tied at 1-1 and no decision for Felix. The game would wind up going into extra innings, and Coco Crisp had gone 70 games without a home run. He made it sure it wasn't going to be 71, way out to right field. And Oakland led for the first time all day. M's make it interesting in the bottom of the 10th. Kyle Seeger led off with a double, and nobody could get him home. De Ho Lee goes down swinging, 2-1 the final. Manager Scott Service disappointed afterwards. We struggled to really put anything together. We had some chances, you know, uh, we got on base, uh, gave the walk, you know, a couple innings, uh, tried to create something. We just, just didn't hit guys in scoring position today. Um, you know, we got to get better. You know, we're just, just not getting it done at that point. To put Felix's frustrations into perspective, he's 0 and 1 on the season despite an ERA of 0 0.69. For the 133rd time in his career, King Felix went at least six innings, allowing one run or less and for the 38th time, walked away with a no decision.
pretty disgusted. You know, we kind of had where he was at going into the game, pitch wise. I didn't know if he'd have enough to get through the next inning. So, I uh, thought at that point, uh, probably best to uh, to go with somebody else. He had, he had a great outing today. Can't say enough about the way he competed and finished off hitters. Really good outing for Felix. The ends get right back to work tomorrow as the Texas Rangers come to town for a three-game series. And the Sounders look to continue their winning ways last night in Houston, and they needed every minute and then some against the Dynamo. Ziggy Schmidt had a game plan for the offense coming into the day, and Houston evidently had a better defensive plan. Clint Dempsey had a chance on a free kick in the 33rd minute before sending that one wide right. Seattle's defensive effort in the first half was lacking, to say the least, off a of Houston throw in. Nobody attacks the passes, and Giles Barnes flicks the ball over the head of Stephen Fry and into the back of the net, 1-0 Houston. Same score in the 68th minute. It's a 3-on-5, and somehow Houston gets a shot off. Just a tremendous save by Fry. Kept it 1-0. The Sounders' offense got better as Andres even shets with a good chance in the 72nd, but he was stopped. In an extra time, Sounders are down to their last possession. The ref has the whistle in his mouth. Houston just needs to clear the ball, and it's over. But the ball gets worked into the box, and it would wind up finding Chad Marshall, who taps it in. The Sounders steal a point with a 1-1 tie. A big point in the standings when it looked like all was lost. And one more note, Huskies baseball team battled a rain delay in Arizona State of all places. They finally finished up as the Dogs won 6-1. to one. We'll have those highlights coming up at 6.30. That's your Cairo 7 Sports Report. I'm Kurt Schroeder. We'll be right back.